Hello, hello, and welcome once again. J76NY here, and welcome to the first episode of a new series on Strategic Command World War I. The game is a turn-based, hex-based strategy game where you fight uh, World War I as either side. I've already done a campaign as the Central Powers, uh, a link to that at the end of the video, if you want to check that out. I did lose that campaign, uh, so we're going to be starting a new campaign as the Entente and see if I can do any better here. I've been wanting to start this uh, campaign for quite some time. Some other things have uh, kept me busy, so finally bit the bullet and I'm going to uh, start a campaign as the Entente. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the premiere of our Entente campaign on Strategic Command World War I. Okay, well, the Central Powers make their opening moves. Uh, the way I uh, recorded the first um, series was I did a turn, and then I let the AI do a turn, and then I did another turn, um, just so that when we start each episode, the AI makes a fresh turn. That way I don't forget uh, what was going on in the meantime between the cordons. Uh, here we see the uh, Germans pushing into Belgium. Um, they're making an attack on the French in the south down here. It's like a pretty successful attack. They may actually uh, push this guy back. an attack on Belgrade. Okay, so they've made some headway so far. They've taken Luxembourg, uh, moving in on the Ardennes and Verdun. Uh, looks like they're sending... Uh, quite a force up into Belgium. They are moving into uh, hex adjacent to Verdun. Verdun is a uh, major objective that they need to capture and we need to hold. It is August 1st, 1914. Alright, Luxembourg surrendered. Germany plunders 21 MPP, which is what you have to spend to reinforce. Uh, Gobin invades its pursuers in, or evades pursuers in the Mediterranean. There is a naval aspect to this game. Uh, it's interesting, to say the least. Um, Russian mobilization continues. 
I've got plans for the Russians. Russians are going to be my hammer. Um, in the east, or the west, what I'm going to do is uh, probably form up some type of defense in depth against the uh, Germans there. Uh, if I can pull them a little further west, then that will stretch out their supply lines a little bit with the ultimate goal of coming in around their main force and cutting them off while the uh, Russians hit the uh, eastern front pretty hard. Uh, I'm also going to try and get a uh, few particular allies into this game. I noticed the AI uh, grabbed uh, Italy and um, I think Bos or not Bosnia, but um, one of the caucuses or the uh, Central European powers. That made it a little easier for them. Uh, here you see the or you saw the action of the turn. I guess it only um, stays so long, but this is what I was talking about. Rom Romanians may be tempted to enter the war on our side if we can advance into Austria-Hungary. Capturing Krakow, Lemberg, and Presmo will encourage Romania to pursue its ambitions in Transylvania. Also consider using diplomacy to move Romania towards the Entente. Be bold, and the war can be won. Grand Duke Nicholas. Serbia is not a wealthy country, but it has experienced army that, with our assistance, should be able to tie up significant enemy forces. It is therefore recommended we consider, consider sending supplies by sea to the Serbs. To do this, click on war maps at the bottom at the top of the screen, then convoy maps, and click on the French flag, and you can adjust the number of military production points to be sent to Serbia by sea every turn. Having entered the war to aid Serbia in its stand against hostile aggression, it is vital that we assist them as much as we can. Our top priority is therefore to attack Austria-Hungary, defeating their forces and capturing territory. We should also consider sending supplies to Serbia via Romania. Now that we are at war, our top priorities must be to assist the French in defending their homeland from invasion. At the same time, the Royal Navy can launch a blockade to cut off Germany's food imports from the many neutrals. This will re reduce their national morale, but be warned it will annoy the U.S. from time to time. To institute this blockade, place naval units on the merchant ship icons, which is this right here. Uh, note that the more ships used, the better. The northern blockade from Scapa Flow to Norway will be more effective location. We can lay Navy mines in strategic locations to damage enemy shipping, and these can be laid two per turn by destroyers and torpedo boats. As they can sink neutral shipping, it is best not to place them on or adjacent to convoy routes from neutral countries like Norway and Sweden. Lay a minefield, right-click, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if a unit does not strike an enemy minefield, it will lose two to five strength points and its morale will be reduced, so beware of the enemies will be laying mines too. The initial units comprising the British Expeditionary Force, which is ready for service on the continent, are all set to sail to France. The Expeditionary Force consists of experienced 1st and 2nd Corps and an HQ unit commanded by Sir John French. <clears throat> Arrangements have been made to deploy the Corps at Amiens, with Sir John French setting up his headquarters at Rouen. Shipping these units to France will cost 50 MPP. We actually don't have. We'd like to send the British Expeditionary Force to France. We are going to send it to France. Okay. We can deploy to Paris. Where his headquarters unit is. All right, so that's done. Uh, as you can see, we've got uh, the MPP is what's used in terms of uh, research and, uh, like I said, um, reinforcing units. Um, it can also be used in diplomacy. So the war maps, envoy route. 
Uh, left click flags for convoy information. Alright, it looks like, uh... Hmm. Oh my god. What happened? Alright, so convoy maps. Alright, so we're gonna send the maximum, or a half the maximum. 5%. There. Uh, convoy routes. That's neutral. Alright. So that's what I wanted to do there. Uh, purchase. Uh, what we can purchase... Uh, units here. Uh, we don't have any... Um, We don't have the MPP to be purchasing units, but uh, it gives uh, Detachments Corps, Marines, Anzac Corps, um, 75 MPP. Uh, for France... I don't think we can do anything. France has 30 MPP. So right off the bat, we're not able to uh, really do anything here. Uh, Italy hasn't really entered the war yet. Um, U.S. has 75 MPP. We could uh, recruit a detachment for the U.S. Uh, see what's in production. Nothing. Alright, so in January 2015, we'll get a core and a uh, ship, artillery, airship, ship, 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 as you can see. Uh, right now being August of 1914, we've got a little bit of time so we get more um, units produced. That's that. And then in the diplomacy, uh, we can spend MPP to influence, but we don't have the MPP, so. To increase it, insufficient funds, we can't. I wonder if we can... No, we can't, because we don't have the funds. All right, and then the research up here. <clears throat> yeah, we don't have funds here. Yeah, there's nothing we can do at this present time. 30 MPP, 25 MPP, uh, US has 75 MPP, so we could start researching tanks, uh, fighters, heavy bombers, long-range aircraft, advanced subs, airship, ground attack weapons, or not ground attack weapons. All right, so we're going to spend 75 to our research tank development. Leaves us with nothing, so. All right, that's the research. Now, what do we have to do to uh, move our troops around, get them into position? Uh, here we see uh, the situation in Serbia.
we can dig in. Looks like they already have a trench line set up. And in peck. Right, and then we can reinforce. Try and reinforce these damaged units. Uh, let's move you up here. Gives us two to two odds on him. Uh, we can't move into a zone of control or past a zone of control. Two to one. Uh, I think we can move him by rail. Force march. That'll give us a little extra range. To get him up there, but I'm gonna send him I'm gonna send him here. And then move the headquarters unit a little bit closer. I'm not gonna make any attacks with these guys on this turn. Um, reinforce or dig in. Move you a little closer. Dig in here. All right, so it looks like Italy is already on our side, which is a good thing. Can't go through Switzerland. send these guys through I don't think we can send them through France just yet got this detachment down here guarding Rome I'll leave him in place for now So we have a French carrier here. We've got French sub. I'm going to reinforce him before I do any moving. We've got the pre-dreadnought. Got a lot of forces uh, down here. All right. I think I want to deal with this. First, see if we can get more than just him up here.
Oh yeah. Bring you up. A one to six for him. Number three. Now we got Navy Mines. Well, that wasn't good. Uh, I think right now... Send this uh, light cruiser up as well. Alright, so this should give us enough to take care of this naval unit here. One to six. Alright, and he pulled back. He pulled back right into port. to nothing now. That's not good. Swap these guys out. Alright, that just took all his movement points for the turn. Alright, so we... Uh, can't do anything with him. So that's the Mediterranean naval movement for the turn here. I'm going to send him into the Strait of Gibraltar to kind of hold this position here. Now our main fleet going to work on blockades here. Get our main fleet moved up. We're going to leave Prince of Wales in the rear for now. Scout out a little bit with our destroyers. Actually, we could put a destroyer right on the... Okay, we got enemy contact. Got one to two. He's on his own if, he decide, if I decide to fight with him, actually. And we hit some mines. We bring anyone else down to assist. E. All right, we can move our plane over. Shots at this guy. Okay, damage evaded. That's good. We did get him to pull back. Let's get these guys out on the... on the blockade route. Okay. 
we could bring you. Yeah, go all up there. So we've initiated the blockade. This. Right now, on to the land. Uh, I'm going to leave the garrison in here. out that will bring you out I'm not sure if I can hit my own mines or not so I'm kind of a little leery about laying mines okay so I'm gonna want to move in a little bit Try and counter their push up here. Uh, three to three, three to two. We can move up towards north. I'm going to try and block them in. Without putting them too much in harm's way. Three to three. Oh, we don't want to do that. Three to two. Two to three. Two to two. I am, like I said, I'm okay with pulling back a little bit. Kind of uh, created a uh, avenue that I can try and draw them in and lengthen their um, supply lines. What we can do here, nothing. Okay, three to three. Uh, dig in down here. Oh, this guy's almost wiped out. We can't do anything to uh, if we can pull him up. Can't pull him up far enough. All right, he's pretty well dug in there. Three to two. I could pull him up. Need one now. We'll attack him from here. And then swap out. Pull him down a little bit. We got a three to one that'll wipe him out. So we don't want to do that. Two to three, three to two. Three to nothing, three to two, three to three here. Uh, we could move you up. Three to two, two to three. Swap. Two to two. We 
can't swap. Three to three, three to two. Three to nothing. I'll take the, uh... Minus two to two. Swap them out. Three to two. Got a three to one here. It's not that good. Uh, we can move you. Move you up. Three to one. Like I said, that would wipe him out. Uh, swap him out for a more powerful unit. Right, that's what I'm looking at for the Western Front. And the Russian Navy. You can do here. On the blockade route. Gonna move all my units out into the Baltic Sea. There's mines right there. Got Petrograd here. Uh, can we rail him? Alright, so our main forces look like a bunch of detachments. The only one we really have any type of I don't want to say chance, but possibility of doing some damage is our cavalry or uh this unit right here. Um if we could push up Through this corridor here up to Danzig, that would be ideal. Two to three against him, two to three, two to one. Right, we're moving in behind him. I want to get some guys up over here as well. See what we can do here. Nothing against him. We can do a two to three, two to one, two to two, two to three, two to one. So we'll go. This should take care of him. Up. 
two to one. Three to one, right? To get these guys moving towards Krakow. I don't really expect Krakow to be undefended. <laughs> uh, secondary supply. National morale objective. Um, yep. Even to heavy enemy contact over here. Start moving on Lemberg here. Three to nothing. Two to one over here. Two to one. One to three. That's pretty good. So I'm trying to move in behind them here. I'm gonna spend most of my uh Nash or my um points for the Russians on beefing up my forces. Like I said, they're going to be my hammer. Kind of the meat wave type of thing. Three to nothing. Three to... Two to one. Two to one. Two to one. One to one. One to one. One to three. That's fairly good. Two to one. It's not very good. Uh, let's have you dig in. Have you dig in like this? That's going to be the Russian front, two to one. It's tempting, tempting to hit him just because it'll do some damage, but I don't really think at this point that would be a very good idea. All right, Serbians. Now these guys have all done what they can. a little bit. We do have a... Uh... Let's see what we do. I get this sub out area. Gonna get you headed towards the Mediterranean. Decent amount of Russian here. I'm just happy I don't have to play as the Ottomans. They were a pain in the ass to kind of deal with. I 
don't like that this area right down here is completely open. Okay. I think that's what I'm going to do for this turn here. Um, maybe move out... What I want to put you... Get you moving up here. In for you. I'm gonna leave him where he is, but oh, I guess we'll just not leave him where he is. Um, I think that's gonna do it for uh, my first turn. Uh, like I said, the way I work it is I start the episode with the AI taking their turn. Um, primarily because I record uh, in batches and I don't want to forget over the course of time in between recordings what the AI did and what I have to respond to. So the Central Powers made their first move. Uh, we uh, moved a little bit to counter that. We had a few successes here and there. Um, I expect them to uh, ramp up the effort uh, pretty heavy in the next couple turns. They do have to push... Um, push on Paris here, but uh, Paris is pretty well defended, and like I said, if I have to start pulling back uh, to draw them in, I, I can do that. They've got a heavy line up against us, uh, so the goal is to thin them out a little bit and possibly uh, get them to you know, stretch out their lines. Belgium is a problem. I think they're going to fall pretty quick, so I don't know if there's anything I could do to save them at this point. It's a two to one there. So I'm going to reinforce them. Highest they can go is five. I want to pull him out of Antwerp or Ether. But if we can move in on Brussels and retake Brussels, that's a two to two. That's actually not too bad. For what it is. Uh, actually turned out to be one and one, so. Alright, well you're gonna dig in. And we're gonna hold the line here, so. Anyway, that's gonna do it for the first episode. If you want to help the uh, series out a little bit, get some exposure, hit the like button. Uh, tips and advice, as always, go in the comment section down below. If you want to follow along through our Entente campaign on Strategic Command World War One, hit the subscribe. Uh, wouldn't mind having you. The more the merrier. The more advice I get, the happier I am. And uh, we'll pick this up in episode number two as the Central Powers take their turn. A76NY saying thank you very much for watching and have yourself a very good day.